Hello, today I have another power adapter. We have the Belkin Boost Up Charge Pro GAN wall charger with way too many words on it. It's designed for speed, power, and safety. If you're new to the channel, there's a whole series on these power adapters where I test them for the power in and out while also comparing them to other offerings. There are billions of power adapters in use and this series will help you make an informed buying decision since not all devices are created equal. They do give us something on the side of the box here where they tell us the various devices it's compatible with, mostly Apple devices. It says it supports most smartphones, tablets, and laptops. That means it probably doesn't work with other devices out there, or your mileage may vary. There are no power statistics or indication of uh, voltages or anything on the outside of the packaging. So let's open it up. All right, so here's the adapter. You can see we have our one USB-C port on the bottom, Belkin on the one side. It does have like a right angle plug thing, so, and these are non-foldable plugs, so it's a little different there. We can see on the actual device, they give us some of the, the different logos. We can see it has the uh, UL listing with Canada and US, and it's got a number on there, NOM. We can see the actual model number there. We can see it's 60 watts, and we can, they tell us the various different amounts of powers and voltages that it can deliver, so 5, 9, 15, and 20. Uh, just for comparison, this is the Anchor 65 watt adapter, so similar type category. And in true form with Belkin, we get uh, we get whatever that is. So inside this giant user manual, there's nothing that actually tells you what it does for power. There's no statistics, anything like that. So the packaging weighs 44 grams. The power adapter weighs 93 grams. Not bad for a 60 watt device. Let's plug it in, check out the idle condition. All right, so after letting the device settle down for a little while, we can see it's using about 0 0.06 watts for idle, which isn't too bad. Low power factor, moderate VA, not bad. Expect the total harmonic distortion is gonna be somewhere in the middle. So we got about 34, not bad actually. I'm starting to get some high hopes for this one. Let's go ahead and plug it in. So we get our solid red LED there which means it has power delivery modes. So we can push the button and we change to the nine volt mode up here. Push it again, we get 15 volts. Push it again, we get 20 volts. And then we're back to five volts. So I don't see any PPS modes on this device. It just has the four power delivery three modes. Because this just has the power delivery modes, it does mean this device will not charge everything that's out there on the market. So there's going to be some limitations with this device. So I have the device running at 30 watts right now on the output side. So it's delivering 30 watts through this cable. And on the input side coming in, we have 32.75 watts. So the efficiency of this device is actually very high. So power factor is important because the lower this number is, it means we're using more current to deliver the same amount of watts. So you would like to see this number be one. So next we have our total harmonic distortion on the current side specifically. And we can see we're about 127% with about a 50% load on this device. And that's not very good. And this total harmonic distortion is a sum of all the unwanted harmonics. And I have a little clip I'll put on screen now if you want to get some more details on that. So all these unwanted harmonics basically mean extra power loss. So we want to avoid those if we can. So one of the things we can see with this device we're at about a 50% load, and we can see the power factor is still low, which means this device does not have power factor correction. But, in fact, in any 60 or 65 watt class power adapter, I have yet to see one that has power factor correction. There is no regulatory body that requires it, so I doubt that we're going to see any power adapters that do have that function, even though this is getting on pretty pretty large amount of power to not have that feature. And we'll, we'll see that the current's going to be very high on this device. So let's take it up to the 60 watt load. And we can see our power 65 watts in for 60 watts out. So again, the efficiency is pretty strong on this one. Let's go ahead and look at our peak current. So this is what really becomes a problem. So we're looking at about three amps of peak current. So for a perfect sine wave, which is ideal, this would be about 1.414 times this. Instead, we got about three, maybe a little more than three times this number. So that's telling us that the power, that the current is not being 
use in a very sinusoidal way. And some of the tools that we have available in this power analyzer are also telling us that, which is the low power factor and also that high THD that we saw before. All right, let's go ahead and take it up to overload. Got 65 watts, 66 watts, 67 watts, 68 watts, 69 watts, 70 watts, 71 watts, 72 watts, 73 watts, and it's out. Turn it off. It recovered to the five volts, so you don't have to unplug it under an overload condition, so that's good. And it'll still deliver its power, so yeah. Not too bad, so 72 watts. This is definitely a very good production range for a power adapter in a 60 watt class. So this thing is, you know, definitely gonna trip out at a safe point, it's good. Uh, so no problems there at all. You're not gonna get too much extra out of it though, so you get about 60 watts, what they claim, so nothing wrong with that at all. All right, so when we look at the overall numbers for this power adapter, we see the thing that stands out is the efficiency. It has very strong power efficiency. From 10% all the way up, it's, it's very good in that aspect. In terms of a lot of the other statistics, it's not that good. So it has fairly poor power quality, basically. For a 60 watt class adapter, it's not winning the race. We do see that the idle power quality is a little bit better. So this does have a little bit of filtering in there somewhere. So that power consumption is low and the power quality score in idle is okay. When we take a look at this compared to other devices, it's on the lower end because we're comparing it to those higher power class devices. And we see that it actually, in terms of power quality overall, ends up losing out to the 30 watt version of this adapter, which I like. Again, efficiency, awesome. Everything else, meh. So when we look at this on the idle graph, we can see that it's, eh, you know, it's not bad. The power quality is okay at that idle condition. The power consumption is about 0.06 watts. Not a liter, not the worst. When we look at it in terms of its overall performance, we can see that it's it's gonna be grouped in with those 65 watt adapters. The power consumption is a little lower because of that higher efficiency though. So it's, it's okay. The Belkin Boost Up 60 watt power adapter. It's a safe adapter. It's gonna be a reliable adapter. It's expensive. We're in that $50 range. It provides the five, nine, 15 and 20 volts out. It does not have a 12 volt mode. It has the UL safety listing. So there's no problems there, but it doesn't stand out as a class leader in the power adapter market. All right, so that's about it. I'll see you in the next one and check out the description for some more details.